Hey you guys and welcome to a legendary showdown of the ages. I'm a rubber duck of war but today we're going to be watching Goborto leading the mighty forces of Grand Cafe against, you guessed it, the false legions of Grand Cafe. These are the traitors to the true dragon emperor. Looks like Mei Ying has gone a little bit rogue and there's only one way to deal with her. Entrap her and encase her with the magic of the celestial dragon emperor. And it looks like when we have a bucket ton of magic for the forces of Grand Cafe, we have Quad Wu Jing Compass. Two of them are Astromancers riding them dirty into battle. They see me riding style. The other two are the basic ones who do come in with the really powerful bound abilities. Celestial Comet as well as Celestial Lightning. Now you may have seen Wujing compasses in the past and think they're a huge meme. But seriously, bringing mass Wujings with their ability just to spam those spells over and over again is actually pretty damn scary. And I've seen it quite a bit in recent competitive play. We also have some peasant longswomen looking to back them up. A couple of grand cannons taking the high ground looking to rain shots down upon their opponents from far. I like this idea quite a bit of utilizing the high ground Obi-Wan Kenobi style. We do have the uh, glorious dragon blooded lord as well. Looks like coming in with magic miss, um, no, missile mirror. There we go. Hopefully I get the words right. There it is. Missile mirror, which is obviously quite useful against Grand Cafe. We have Storm of Shadows. We have the Talons of the Night. We have Ancestral Warriors. All the goodness you could desire. For their opponents, we do have, it seems, a bit more of a mixed martial force. We have a lot more ground troops, that's for sure. We have a load of Jade Warriors as well as Halberds. And it looks like some peasant longsermen escorting a unit of crane gunners on the far side. And some peasant horsemen. Uh, on their own high ground, we have another unit of double grand cannons, which is pretty cool. They're opening up shots. It's such a fantastic sound. You can see a good micro from their opponent is going to mean that the majority of those shots are indeed dodged. And then we have Miao Ying herself coming with the Talons and her dragon form, looking to bring pain and destruction to those who defy her rule. So it should be a good fun game. Looks like early on the Grand Cannon is just going to be firing at Peasant Long Spearman, which is more like practice shooting than anything realistically. We have the uh, Grand Cannons currently idle up here on the high ground. Nothing they can shoot just yet. And it looks like the Peasant Long Spearman are going to be falling back. A relatively sound strategy here. Get back to the woods and try to avoid being sniped out by the enemy cannons. It looks like the Drabline Lord is going for a real ballsy play, flying quite close to the sun here. And of course, by the sun, I mean a fiber even Thunder Dragon of Darkness. It looks like a Storm of Shadows goes down, slowing Miao Ying. That's going to allow the uh, Dragonblind Lord to sneak into the back line, do a cheeky little bit of a drive-by on the Grand Cannons, dropping off some Ancestral Warriors. Really quick micro, though, by the opponent. Both the Grand Cannon crews realize what's going on, drop their artillery pieces, and start running to save their own skins. It looks like the Ancestral Warriors will be coming forth from the Dragon Portal to bring wrath, vengeance, and justice to those who have defied them in life. And uh, yeah, looks like at least one Grand Cannon will be going down here. There's not too many places they have to run and hide. And it looks like there is a summoned unit of Great Longmars looking to drive away the Dragon Blooded Lord, and they are going to be successful with that. It looks like the four Wujing compasses will be moving up towards Objective 1. And uh, in combination with the amount of comets and chain lightnings they're going to be able to bring down, they could certainly contest that objective rather nicely. We also have a load of peasant archers and cavalry being summoned to the battlefield. The cannons are finally singing, looking to launch some shots in the direction of Miao Ying and hopefully finish her off. They need to be careful though. Some peasant horsemen rampaging through the back lines, going for a cheeky bit of a raid. They are going to meet Jade Lancers in hand-to-hand -hand combat. That is only really going to go one way. The Jade Lancers with their heavy armor will comfortably slaughter the peasants. And though it looks like it was a bit of a bait and switch, one unit of peasant horsemen pins in place a double Jade Lancers. Some of you know peasant horsemen sneak around the back. They need to keep going. Now is your time, lads. No, don't turn and engage. Push forward. Look, there's two cannons. Eat them. Eat them. Okay, go, go. Thank God for that. I thought they were going to turn around and engage the uh, Jade Lancers. I'm like, no, fly, you fools. Go and uh, take down those grand cannons. And it looks like, though, their indecisiveness may cause a bit of a problem. Jade Lancers are definitely going to rear attack them. Are they able to break the Grand Cannons off in time? Only time will tell. The Peasant Archers are moving up now to help support this push for Objective 1. And look at all these Wujing compasses. They don't care. Great Longmar Riders are nothing to the might of the Dragon Emperor's magic. And uh, yeah, they're doing an absolutely fine job. Grand Cannon is also launching shots down range, aiming at the slowed Great Longmars. Not a bad strategy whatsoever. Those Archers certainly need to get shooting though before they get overwhelmed. It looks like the Grand Cannons will be getting saved here. The Peasant Horse have made it, but that, that slow delay is going to allow the Jade Lancers to cut them to pieces. I don't blame them for the delay. They're like, oh, you know, our friends are in trouble. Should we save them? No, you should always slay your enemies. Jade Warriors, as well as Peasant Longstone, have occupied the other two objectives. Crane Gunners are vibing in the back. 
They're going to bring some long-range support. And it looks like one of the Grand Cannons was able to survive. The other, unfortunately, being shattered. But not too bad, considering it did waste one of those Ancestral Warrior Summons. Apologies if I uh, sniff and cough, by the way, for this a little bit. I'm still a little bit under the weather. So uh, Miao Ying is going to jump on top of the Grand Cannon, looking to uh, finish it off here. Both of them are being terrified, and rightly so. The Peasant Horsemen have actually been able to survive. And it looks like the Jade Lancers have realized their folly in, uh, or folly in trying to save their homies here. We do have some Peasant Longsmen on the arrival, though. They will be able to drag down a decent amount of the cavalry and maybe do some okay damage to Miao Ying, who herself is currently getting slowed allowing time for the Peasant Longsman to charge at that dragon. Certainly not an order they are appreciating, I wouldn't think so anyway. We have more Peasant Longsman. Looks like they're going to be moving around to the middle, perhaps. Archers are being shut down by Jade Warriors, but in comes the lightning and comets of those Wujing compasses. And it's going to be pretty scary stuff. Look at the outrageous damage you can cast. Remember, these guys have that twice as a bound spell on every single one of these models, and the Astromancers as well. We uh, pop in here, you can see it. You can, oh, it actually keeps up how many uses you have left of them, which is pretty damn awesome. That's a lot of firepower can be coming up to the battlefield. And it is going to enable uh, Grand Cafe to hold Objective 1 here. There's a few beat up units of infantry from the Red Grand Cafe, but I don't think it's going to be enough to take this objective. However, they do have Objective 2 and 3, so they're not going to be complaining too much. Likewise, there's a lot of Peasant Horsemen and Jade Lancers reaving through the back lines. Shutting down crane gunners, using great long mars, really using their mobility advantage of Red Cafe at the moment to slaughter the enemy and pin them in place. We are going to a load of infantry being summoned, however, now by the uh, Green Grand Cafe player. Is it going to be enough? I'm not so sure. Miao Ying is incredibly powerful, doing a lot of damage here in the back burners. We have some Jade Warriors pushing on to Objective 3. They should be able to take down the double peasant long swim in here. We definitely want to see some support, perhaps, from these crane gunners to help secure Objective 3 a little bit better. The Red Cafe player does summon a couple more Lancers. Really going for the mobility game at the moment. He still wants to get some infantry on the battlefield, though, to contest the objectives in the mid to late game. Jade Warriors are going to be pushing up to try to deal with the Peasant Longspearmen, but as soon as they get bunched up like this, you know the Wujing Compasses are going to start just raining down hellfire from the skies, and that's not going to be what the uh, Grand Cafe forces of the Red uh, Grand Cafe player want to see whatsoever. A nice slow fight here at the moment, but yeah, Objective 1 well and truly in the hands here of our green little friend. The Jade Lancers are rotating up and around, looking to bring pain to the Wujing Compasses and perhaps shut them down. Great Longmiles in the back doing a good job with Jade Lancers, constantly hounding and harassing the enemy. Crane Gunners are attempting to drag them down, last samurai style, but unfortunately they get jumped by the Longmar Riders who are going to just bound between them, severing heads and uh, piercing hearts with mighty spears. Not a good day to be a crane gunner. It looks like they are certainly going to be finished off. Likewise, Miao Ying is attempting to feast upon the soul here of this Dragonblind Lord whose horse gets pushed all the way back up against the mountain. There is no escape from Miao Ying. She shall capture you, she shall torture you, and she shall teach you of her light and darkness. And it looks like the uh, Lodmar's come in and actually pushed the Dragonblind Lord a little bit out of the reach of uh, Miao Ying. And maybe they're going to be able to escape here. It's tough to say. River Storm shows upgraded going down on the Jade Lancers. As well as a Talons coming in now from the uh, the Mighty Dragon Blood Lord. It looks like Talons from both of these players now coming in. Oh my god, the Dragons can hold hands, do like a little thumb war here as they arise from the depths. Just destroying cavalry on both sides. Pure carnage, and I love to see it. There's a decent little contingent of Halberds and Jade Warriors in the mix here for the Green Cafe to push on. They well and truly have Objective 1 under control. They need to move some more of these troops around and rotate into the middle. They do currently uh, you know, need to get these objectives pretty quickly. They are behind significantly on the tickets right now. Astro Monster is going to push forwards. Wujing Compass as well is trying to duel with Jade Lancers. So we can see some more Lightning or Comets come down. They'll certainly be able to turn the tide here. Great Longmars continue their pursuit. Somehow the slivery and sneaky Dragonblood Lord was able to escape once more the wrath of Miao Ying, who's not too happy about that whatsoever. Jade Lancers and Jade Warriors both going to start pushing on to Objective 3, which has been successfully defended at the moment by Jade Warriors, as those Crane Gunners have turned to uh, bring their barrels down on the enemy. Jade Warriors, they get Shield Breaker, they start getting pe uh, pelted from the side, and the Peasants are very help uh, hand uh, very... Uh, oh god, I'm losing my words here. You can tell I'm a little bit ill and my mind's gone a little bit to mush. 
But they, they appreciate the support of the crane gunners. Missile mirror goes down though, and those snipers are popping themselves in the dome. 360 no scope style. And uh, they're not going to be enjoying that whatsoever. They are free once more. And it looks like they are aiming at the Jade Lancers who are on arrival. That's not what you want to see. 60 heavily armored cavalry are on the approach. But luckily the peasants ride out to meet them. Very heroic of them knowing they can't win. They can pin the enemy at bay. And hopefully allow more and more time for those snipers to uh, line up their scopes and dish out the pain. Jade Lancers are almost pushing through there. They do get stopped by the peasant horsemen. Nice old counter play there by the red Grank Fae player. Victor 3 still his, so is Objective 2. We do get a wannabe Comet Cassandora come down. I think it's called like the Celestial Comet or something, but it, it, it is basically Comet Cassandora. Comes down doing some decent work on the enemy. We have Halberds moving up. Grand Cannon, though, is going to be shooting in to the mixture here, trying to protect Objective 2 where possible. And it looks like there was a big push for Objective 1. Halberds are moving in. We have more Wujin compasses and Astro Monsters hiding all over the place, though. So they can certainly come back and help her once again secure Objective 1. And it looks like we are going to be getting either a Chain Lightning or a Comet come down in. We can see it being summoned in. The clouds are formed. And boosh! A big, fat, juicy Comet comes down. So hardcore. And uh, so many dead Jade Warriors on the ground. Look at the corpses stacking up. It is quite scary. And through the smoke, we can see the Astro Monster pushing on to greater feats of heroism for his people. Looks like it's going to be enough to break the Jade Warriors of a chain line and also coming down. Should force these guys off, at least you would hope. Objective 1 is very, very contested right now, but down the Halberdiers go a lovely double cast there. And now we have Astro Monsters and Jade Warriors pushing on it towards Objective 2. Over in Objective 3, it's still hotly contested. We have a bucket ton of infantry coming in, though. Peasant Archers as well as Halberdiers making that push for Objective 3. Crane Gunners in the back will once again apply some decent overwatch fire and then they get hit by a missile mirror and they're going to take themselves out. Lovely play so far by uh, the mighty Gabato and his dragon blooded general who's survived just the worst trials imaginable. Somehow still alive and now taking out Crane Gunners. Lovely uses as well of talents in the early game. Jade Warriors are holding up for now alongside Peasant Long Spearmen but with the Peasant Archers moving in. It looks like Objective 3 is starting to falter, and we are about to get a really, really nasty Talons come down. The Peasants attempt to dodge it, but a little bit too little, too late there. And look at the HP just get ripped away there from the health bars. So many dead. So many dead. Look at that spell. It is carnage all around us. And Objective 2 is well and truly secured now by the Green Cafe player. Objective 1 is a little bit contested. We do have double at Jade Lancers on arrival. Cannons are shooting in. Astro Monsters so far have been able to hold this objective. We have Peasant Archers nearby as well who can always snook their booties in there and perhaps hold that objective a little bit longer. It is the Drill Triple Cap and I didn't actually realize how close it was. 4,830 tickets to the red team, 2,700 to the green team, but they now have that Triple Cap, which uh, that thing goes up fast when you're on a Triple Cap. It is scary. When you're in this situation, the red player is in at the moment. But Double Jade Lancers move on to Objective 1. He doesn't have to hold one of these objectives for very long. And he's certainly got the tools here to take this objective. As long as he doesn't get caught by those Chain Lightnings or Celestial Comets. He needs to uh, really jump onto these Peasant Archers and force them back if they do push in. He is attempting to spread out right now. But we are about to get a nasty Comet come down. It's going to catch a clump of Jade Lancers. Not the most damage there, but hey, damage is damage at the end of the day. We have Halberds on arrival. Likewise, we have Jade Lancer reinforcements coming in from all angles. Objective 1, hotly, hotly contested at the moment. And it looks like we are going to get a uh, rather nasty Storm Shadows go down on these Jade Lancers. And they push forward to deal with the Archers. Now they're going to be slowed down and butchered by their Jade Lancer brethren. And it looks like here on Objective 1, it is going to green once more as we get yet more air effect spells or... Uh, uh, kind of like lightnings and so forth come down and it does so much disgusting damage honestly wujing compasses are pretty good now i know they were considered mean for a long time but motor wujings just constantly doing those bound spells over and over again is uh, certainly quite scary we're gonna get a talons go down as well kind of cleave out some of the jade warriors here or perhaps it's actually more likely to try to uh maybe it was going after jade lance i'm not sure who's that one that was it was like Meow Ying, of course or the uh, giant blooded lord they're both uh, attempting to be masters of the same law of magic. Jade Lancers getting pounded once more. They're really getting dragged down here. The tickets are certainly swooping. And I don't see any way back in this for the Red Grand Cafe. It is green, green, baby, wherever you look. Get to free secure. They're pushing the enemy back into their deployment zone. Overwhelming fire rain rockets and cannons of aggressive pushes into enemy territory. Looks like this Wujin compass is about to go down. It does unfortunately break to the Overwatch fire from the Jade Warrior crossbowman. But it is not going to be enough. 
The green player is in full ascendancy at the moment. Miao Ying is taking a pounding shots now down range, and uh, she's not enjoying that whatsoever. The Grand Cannon trying their best to uh, really rip and tear. Wu Jing Compass is getting the punish itself, though. The Grand Cannon's on the high ground, trying to at least get the moral victory of slaying some of these pesky Astro Monsters once and for all before they have to retreat back and rethink the uh, Miao Ying Rebellion, which unfortunately hasn't gone too well for them today. And uh, yeah, it is certainly all over. The players are equal tickets-wise now, but it's a triple cap. They do start pushing back and actually claim an objective free with some horsemen, but it is far too little too late. And they're peasant horsemen. They're not going to stand a chance here against the halberdiers. Grand Cannon as well, just lining up and raking down the ranks of those cavalry, leaving bloody holes and ruins on the ground. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Apologies again for my, my voice and the sniffles and so on. Uh, I'm still a little bit under the weather, but it's getting better, hopefully. So maybe a stream later this week. We'll have to see. If not, it'll have to be early next week. Well played to the players, though. Gabato, I think, did a really decent job. Particularly impressive how well he protected the Dragonblood Lord. And yeah, the Wujin comes to his 1.4k value there. 400 value, 970, 935. Not the craziest stuff, but they certainly did a pretty good job holding that top objective. I was impressed over Miao Ying. Over 4,300 value from her. And the Crane Gunner's got 1.1k, certainly not too shabby, but eventually were shut down by some real quite canny play here from Gabato. Very impressed indeed. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to leave a big fat juicy thumbs up. Subscribe as well to the channel if you haven't already. And feel free to leave a comment down below of what you thought of the battle. There's a load of links down below as well to Twitch, Patreon, Discord. Twitch, I do occasional extra streams. Patreon, I uh, you know, is where you can support the channel. And a uh, massive shout out to my patrons. They are the ones who can keep, you know, keep the channel going. And a uh, massive shout out to them. I really need to get like a board with their names on that I can put up at the end here. And there's also a link down below to my Discord where you can join. We've got like over like 800 or 900 people in there now. It's kind of crazy where you can uh, find games to play Total War with. Get involved with uh, live streams and events I host. Submit replays and just keep up to date in general with the channel. And when I drop content and all that good juicy stuff. Hey yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed. There'll be another video out tomorrow of course. I don't know if it's going to be Domination or Land Battle yet. But uh, yeah, I've got a couple of juicy replays lined up that I'm excited to showcase for you. So until next time, guys, peace, peace. And as always, stay awesome.